Let me give my introduction first. My name is Ranjan. I, am, I have around 12 plus experience in the IT industry. I am a full stack developer. Today, I am your instructor for giving the uh, session on the Flutter. I know that uh, nowadays Flutter is more demand in market. There are a lot of things happening in Flutter. We'll discuss all kinds of stuff. But before we start in Flutter, we have to know basic things regarding the Flutter. And we know that why Flutter is required and what are the different different uh, tools or any kind same kind of framework or like tools is available market which is competitor for the flutter and how we are going to learn the flutter today okay before going into that let's discuss about what is called a ui okay now if you discuss about ui then we'll go then we'll know that what is a mobile ui what is a web ui we're going to discuss a lot of things let me discuss one thing guys first of all it's ui all of you know that UI stands for user interface, right? Or interface means it's a screen. First example, all of you know that suppose you are access, you are watching this video, maybe in uh, like Google Meet, or maybe on using your mobile, or maybe using your uh, desktop, or laptop, or TV screen, or YouTube, etc. But any devices you are watching, that is called the screen. Your mobile is a screen your tv is a screen your laptop is a screen your desktop is a screen everything in this world you can see it's a like everything whatever you can see it is called a screen but the question is how the screen is built i'm not talking about guys the mobile screen i'm talking about whenever you open any application just like suppose you're opening facebook or, or you're opening suppose called uh, facebook or suppose you're opening suppose called swiggy or you have developing an application now, how we can go and how the UI of this Swiggy is built. Now, for mobile, you can see that same Swiggy, just example, let me open the Swiggy here. You can see that whatever Swiggy UI you can see it here, the same to same UI also you can able to see in mobile interface. And the question is, guys, how this is happening? How they're going to build this UI? You can see that now this is our like web UI. You can able to access the Swiggy from web same to same swiggy you can able to access on mobile now the question is now we are not going to discuss about web part guys our primary focus on the mobile let's discuss how this is building how the ui got built now let's before going to that first understand the facebook the swiggy whatever application going to you are creating now this application can be accessed via different 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 different, different screen what are different different access by a different screen or you can say that different interface. So what are the different interface guys? First of all, your web browser. Now if you're going to access a Swiggy, then you have to go and open the Swiggy.com. Now you can able to access the data here. Same to same, suppose you want to access same Swiggy in your mobile, right? You have to access the same mobile. Now mobile also guys, you know that we have multiple kind of platform. Just example, we have Android, and we have like iOS. And previously, know that we have Windows also. Now we are not going to discuss on that, but that is deprecated. But as of front market, there is Android devices or iOS devices. Same this application, Swiggy, Facebook, any application you can able to access. Now that you can able to access via TV. In TV also, you know that we have multiple kinds of like platforms available, just like someone have an Android TV. Someone, you know that if you are using the, I suppose called LG TV, that is called the web OS, that is another OS. Now for the normal, suppose, you know, suppose you are using Amazon Fire Stick, suppose called Fire Stick OS. And the question will be, just a second guys, Fire Stick OS, means for different, different platform, these are platform, browser is a platform, mobile is a platform, TV is a platform, means platform is screen you can see my browser it's a screen if you want to access your um, this swiggy or facebook mobile the mobile is a screen inside the tv and mobile also we have separate 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 segment this is called the platform apart from also guys you can see that nowadays you can also able to access the data data means access the, the application also watch you know that also watch also we have like um, Android watch, and you know that you have iOS watch. 
Always, also, there is a different, different watch is there, but we are not going to discuss about this one. Now you can see that. Now also, guys, you can see that we have also now other platforms are there, just like suppose embedded. Embedded. Embedded means you can see that the embedded means just like example, if you know that it is suppose called um, your Google Home Hub, not Home Mini, Home Hub, you can see embedded system. Second one, you can know that uh, Alexa Hub, these are called the embedded system. Now, guys, you have to understand, now you can access the same application using browser, mobile, TV, watch, embedded. Now, in future, some new device will come, we are going to use. But the question is, suppose just imagine you are a company owner. Now, forgot you are a company owner. Now, the question is, suppose you want to deliver an application. Suppose that application name suppose called Food Delivery App. Okay. Now, Food Delivery App. Suppose you are going to create your own company who is going to do the delivery into a local area. Now, in this case, now how people are going to order the item? Two way. Either they can go to use via into the mobile all from browser and all of you know that how many of you order the item from the browser web browser from your desktop for the swiggy i think one percent if you are working then only suppose you are acting on laptop then only you can go and order the item from the web browser otherwise all 99 percent time you are go for the mobile nowadays all the delivery application all the applications like, just like facebook google twitter instagram just like uh, suppose flipkart or amazon any application you want to order anything you're what you're doing you're going and ordering from the application but guys just suppose you are a you are a company owner now you want to go to market to develop an application now what you going to do you have to first create a web application just like swiggy.com suppose you want to get my uh, swiggy or my restaurant.com going to open now for this one, we're going to create an application here. Same to same. Now we go to application to create from mobile. And mobile you can create, but mobile you know that we have two type of users are available. One is going to use Android. Another people are going to use iOS. As of now, can you ignore this TV and watch? But imagine one problem, guys. Here now to develop only one app. Just you we're going to develop a food delivery app. To develop this food delivery app how many developers you require suppose you are develop you are a company owner you have to know that how much developer required right in this case first you require a web developer who is going to develop application for the web just like suppose you go to develop the application you a second guys we are going to develop the application using the react or angular or view etc we are not going to discuss about guys, this web, web application now. Just imagine going to develop the web application using Angular, React, or Vue. It's totally depend upon you. Now, next part is going to, this is for the web developer means for the browser. Next, we'll come to mobile part, right? In mobile, you know that we are going to develop the application for Android and iOS. All of you know that Android is owned by Google and iOS is owned by Apple, right? Now, this Android is owned by Google and iOS is owned by Apple. Okay. Yeah, Apple. Now, here we have to understand if you're going to develop the application using Android in Google, to develop any application using, first we'll go for Android, then go for Google, okay, and then go for iOS. Now, if you're going to develop a application using Android. Now you have to learn the Android programming. Means you are going to hire a you are going to hire a developer who is a developer is going to okay know the Android development. Okay, what is Android development, guys? To develop an Android application, you have to know okay just, you have to know first the Java or you have to know the Kotlin. Now, guys, previously to develop Android application, you have to know Java. Nowadays, you can write either Java or Kotlin. This Kotlin and Java mostly looks like similar language, but 
Kotlin is dedicated language for the Android. Got it? Now same to same guys. iOS is for Apple. Now if it's Apple, now what's going to happen to develop the Android app iOS application? You have to know either Objective C or you have to know the Swift. But imagine your target is you want to deliver a food delivery app just like suppose called um uh, developing now in this case guys understand how we can do this one now just ready to now you have to go to ready to market in this case now you have to first hire a web developer that developer at least know anyone of, of this then a mobile developer they are going to hire mobile developer two platform one is for android and for ios this is for the java and kotlin or objective c and finally you're going to hire, hire another developer who knows the api part that is okay this maybe suppose maybe this api going to develop in node.js or dot .NET core or suppose like um uh, spring boot or we can etc 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 that is n number of things to be hired now here we are not going to discuss that part let us see that to develop a product for mobile, for web, for API, just imagine how many developers are required. Now, that guys, this is okay. You have budget, you can do that. That is one point. Understood? To develop any application, at least go for web application, then go for mobile application, API, and different, different, different developers are there, but just imagine we are going to focus on mobile. Now, let's go and focus on the mobile part. Let me remove guys from here, this one. Tested here. Now develop the application. You know that we are going to use. Suppose we are going to develop the mobile application because we are we are learning mobile application. Now just imagine. Now suppose you people are suppose I am an Android developer. You people are some iOS developer. Now you know that our what is primary objective? Our primary objective is we need to deliver the food. In this case, what is going to happen? Both the application. It may be iOS. It may be Android. In both the cases, what is going to happen? Your look and feel, your use usability, the search, the selection, the tapping, the 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 layout should be looks like similar. Otherwise, how people are going to use? And and both the application functionality should be work smoothly. In this case, guys, what is going to happen? Now your objective is you need to develop a mobile application for Mugi, like food delivery app. Now, in this case, you need to build the same features for the Android, for the iOS, right? Now, guys, you have a question like, now you are going to hire developer for Android and for a hire developer for iOS. Now, in this case, if any bug will come, then what are you going to do? You need to fix both in Android and iOS. Now, let's understand the pain point first. Then understand, then we'll go and discuss why Flutter is there. Yeah, first understand as a developer as a company owner you are doing the same work you understand you are doing the same work what is same work you have application in this application you have a this kind of restaurant will come you are going to select the location you have to click the item it is going to display the item you have to add to cart blah 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 what are the different 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 functionality here you have to do and all of you know that the same functionality will going to happen both in android and ios if you go for Suki delivery app for Android iOS, you are saying any, any difference? No. You have to select a restaurant, add to cart, proceed, payment, done. Now, guys, you understand, you as a company owner, you are doing the same work for, you are, you are doing the same work for only one task. Means, if suppose you have designed, you will design the same screen for Android and iOS because these two are the two different 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 screen different different devices as well as also you are developing the same screen for web means you are doing like as a developer as a company owner okay company owner we are investing investing three times for a single work investing three times amount for a single work means you are developing a screen just like this screen 
you know, develop the screen for browser, you know, develop the screen for Android, you know, develop the same screen for the iOS. If any bug will come, now you'll go fix for browser, fix for Android, fix for iOS. Just imagine, guys, who is going to do all these things? As a company owner, just imagine you are a company owner. Are you going to do all this kind of stuff? No, right? No one is going to spend the money for doing this three, doing the same work for three times. Obviously, right? You are you are paying or you are investing your same work for three times. Just like a suppose, just like startup. Suppose you are a startup company. You have very minimal resources. You have very minimal budget, and also you have very short time of frame because you have to ready to go market. In this time, what are going? To, you are spending same work for three times. Now, guys, how to solve this problem? You you understood the what is the real problem? Now, same work we are going to do for three times. Now, how to solve this problem? To solve this problem, we are going to learn the concept called Flutter. Now, Flutter is a okay. Flutter is a SDK, Software Development Toolkit. Let me write. Flutter is a you can say framework. Okay, you can say framework. Or you can say that it's a SDK. It's a means software. Guys, software okay, development kit. Using this kit, you need to what is the uh, what you need to do? Okay, is a framework SDK. Using this, okay, using this we can develop we can develop the application for web or mobile mobile second for web third for embedded means if you learn the if you want to learn the flutter okay then then you can go and learn the you can develop the application for all these three platform in mobile also you can develop for both android and ios android and ios means guys if you learn the flutter one code base what is the logic there one code base what is one code base means you could write only one code can reuse multiple platform that is the narrative of a flutter means once you're going to use a flutter then you need to know that using flutter you can able to create the application in one code base means no need to write a specific code for each and every platform no you write a one code base or one code that code will go and work in different different platform that is the use of a flutter guys now let's get started how the flutter is work what is the flutter functionality why flutter are going to use difference between flutter and react native all these things going to discuss now understand what is the use of a flutter what is the real use case for the industry how the flutter is going to solve that problem using our application clear now let me re recap what i'm trying to say i'm saying that now to develop a application nowadays you have to develop an application for multiple platform one is for web one is for mobile in mobile we have android and ios now for each and every platform we require separate separate developer or separate separate engineer that is going to cost you right now what we are going to do now we are going to learn only one language or one platform using that going to develop an application that is going to that is going to uh, deliver the all these three all these three develop different different platform like web develop web mobile and embedded means if you're going to learn the flutter you can write a programming for your uh, android devices ios devices web application google home hub any kind of like um, like google auto you can write any program for anything that is called guys the flutter now let's go discuss how flutter is enabled to all kind of stuff why flutter is there before that what is called native app 
what is called a hybrid app what is called web app let's discuss all these things finally go discuss about all other part okay clear now now you'll ask me question why flutter okay i said that okay this is the advantages you say okay that is advantages but what happening previously previously what happening before flutter what is the solution for all these things guys there is a solution before flutter also there is a solution let's discuss about evolution of application all of you know that initially we are using the web application when people are using more mobile nowadays all the application now mobile oriented again also mobile has different different segment one is android segment another one is ios segment now if you're going to develop an application you have to develop both for android and ios right now now guys before flutter what going to happen how people are doing suppose you your company don't know flutter your company don't know anything then what they're going to do now they're going to hire a people which people, now guys just forget about the web and let only discuss of the mobile suppose you are going to develop a mobile application now as i told for mobile application first will go for the android the android we are going to either going to use to java or going to learn the kotlin okay because you understand this thing as a developer you have to learn you have to hire a people who people know this one same to same if you go for the ios then suppose you're going to know the objective c okay objective c or you can go into use the swift now the problem is guys okay that is okay but you can see the language also different here means here to do the and if you know one language at least you can write a different, different program but no here swift here kotlin here java here objective c now here the problem will be if you are a suppose you are a app developer then you have to know either android or ios either or if you want to know both then you have to learn kotlin swift or java or objective c either you have to learn both any both the language then only you have to write the program right now just understand as a developer how much your learning curve learning curve means you have to learn both the cases but guys this is previously this is the process because in previously like if you go for five or ten years back or five years back also this is the process all the companies are following like as a app developer either you have to know android or you have to know ios if you if you are know everything then you write for android and ios but always it's a problematic why problematic because ios people developing in their way android people developing their their way after they publish the application look and feel different sorry the look and feel bit different now to overcome this issue what company think no we will going to create only one application that application going to serve the both the android and ios now what they plan they go for okay they go for called hybrid but before hybrid if you are developing application using android in java and objective c this is called the guys native native means using which language this platform a develop if you are going to use that language that is called native always understand native means using which language that particular platform application develop that is called the native means android application is going to develop means is going to develop using java or kotlin this is the official language using that going to develop the android now if you're going to develop an application using android then if you're going to use the kotlin and java then you know that this is a this is the native app native means the core application same to same if you're using swift or objective c you developing the ios application sorry this is yes, I, ios application then it's going to solve then it's going to call as the native application but guys here you understand the problem you understand understood like the, there is a two developer required two uh, development same work so what company do then go for hybrid framework what is hybrid framework the hybrid framework is is you have to develop you have to write one code okay one code okay multiple multiple platform Understood? means here you are writing you are learning two things 
either Java or Objective C. You have to learn. But here they are saying one code. Meaning you have to learn only one code, and that code is going to run on multiple platforms. You know, guys, understand? If this is the case, then no one is going to use the Java and this one, right? Now let's understand what is the disadvantage of this one. It, this term is looks like good, right? Whatever you can you can see here, it looks good. Okay, I can write a one program, one code that's going to work on multiple platform. But guys, understand the architecture of this one. This is called hybrid. Let me draw something. Okay. Now understand this is your mobile. Okay, this is your mobile, and your mobile. What going to happen in mobile? You are suppose this is your content area. Okay, sorry. sorry, sorry. This is your content area. In this area, suppose you are displaying the content. Okay, this is your content area. Let me write. Now, whatever application is going to open, all the application will go and it will go and open inside here. Now, develop this application. What are doing? We are suppose we are learning the Java and Kotlin or Swift or Objective C. Whatever program you write is going to display here. That is called a hybrid. Now, what developer did, okay, no, I don't want to learn the Java, we don't want to learn the Swift object to see what I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You know that? What is the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, guys? This is the language for the web. If you want to develop any web application, then you have to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Then what they did, guys, you know, they created a, okay, they created a, a responsive application web app, okay. The responsive web app, which will, which will looks like a mobile application. Looks like a mobile app. Understand what what the developer did? They created a web application. That application, all the controls, all the views, everything looks like a mobile application. Just like if you know in a mobile, we have a button. The button, how the button display, same to same the design a button using HTML CSS. So what they did after design because HTML CSS is a basic code. After design this application, develop application, what they did, they created a web view. Understand? They understand this logic, guys. They created a web view. Web view, you know that you know you are opening a browser into a mobile, right? You suppose you have Chrome, suppose you have Edge or Firefox, you are opening in a mobile. What they did, guys. They did one thing, they created a web browser, and inside this web browser, okay, inside this web browser, what they did, they have added this HTML, okay, CSS, and JavaScript site to here. Now, what they did, this web browser, whatever web browser you can see here, they just display in the content. Understood what they did? Previously, we are using the native code, basic code. What they did, whatever functionality you are going to do, they did, they just get a web browser, browser. Inside a browser, they are running the application. And this browser, they simply attach with the application. Now, when you go to open the application, this looks like a, this looks like a other application because the look and feel everything will be looks like application. But, the internally is running on the browser. Okay, this is just like a like fake, right? It's a fake things, but this is easy to go to market. Means you are not spending time to develop for both Android and iOS. You just create a simple web, web application, and this web application you just simply render inside the browser. Just like a browser in mobile application, you open Chrome and opening Swiggy application. What I can do. I just remove the header and photo. Just imagine uh, what I can do here, guys. Let me go here. I'll, I'll, I'll explain this one. I'll, I'll go here and go to mobile view. And what we're going to do, suppose let me change to Pixel 5. What's Pixel 5, guys? iPhone SE. And um, let me change to just like this one. Uh, just like this one. Okay. This nothing will be this. I'm going to open this this exactly same thing into our into our uh, our application. Now here you see that if you're going to attach this one into application, it looks like application. It looks like application, right? 
exactly same thing people are doing in the hybrid application but guys this kind of application is good if you have only display the data but nowadays application doing lot of things right now this is not a good thing what happening when you touch everything going to happen into the browser only everything is going to happen browser only if your browser is good application render good if our browser is not good it's not going to be good this is called guys hybrid application now let's see what are the then what is the platform they are using this is they're using the phone gap phone gap is the platform which is enables to run the html CSS javascript code into a browser understand the fake one they are just creating fake fake data nowadays previously phone gap nowadays people are using ionic framework i'm going to show you what is ionic what is the, what is the use of ionic framework guys if you go to open here ionic framework you can see here okay, you're going to see and click the ionic framework you can see here this is the cross platform app developer means using the ionic framework you can develop the application but you're going to write the code using html css javascript you can see that the mobile framework for the web means you actually going to finally going to run the application on web but here if you go and see the component guys, that looks like they, they are just creating the all the controls okay all the controls based on if you're going to click on the android you can see that it's going to convert to android this entire ui they have created based on the this is the html designing this is not a native code this is the html one due to html one this is going to run on top of the browser but i understand this is not this is just like a just like a web application they embedded into the app this is called a hybrid this is called the hybrid application now this is okay for to go to market you simply create an application just get a create a hybrid application bind the browser like uh, bind a browser in the browser going to run the app people don't see that but now the problem is guys performance as a developer you know that how like as a user also just imagine how frequently you are scrolling the data just imagine you have a list of data here suppose swiggy scroll 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 you're doing all kind of stuff right in the mobile you just put the scroll in the scroll you know that every time going to change the scroll new new screen is coming the new new screen coming guys right? you know that due to we are binding this data into a browser the scroll is going to be lack because every after some memory the browser is just top of the layer now what happening is giving some kind of a lack lacking in the application due to that this hybrid app hybrid this web app is good for to just create a website small data display that is okay sorry if suppose you want to develop the applications like facebook instagram then this is not a good choice because you know that in facebook instagram we are not only display that we have lots of operation right in this case we are we cannot use the this hybrid web app then what happening now then the concept is coming called hybrid native hybrid native understand what is called hybrid native hybrid native means guys you have to understand this is a in between in between the hybrid and native it's not a browser it's not a browser it's a native code versus a hybrid technology means what going to happen now you are not going to create a browser you want to do one thing you have to develop your code here when this is going to compile the compile code is compiled into the native code means they understand you are developing java developing kotlin you're developing swift then because this is also programming right but when this is compiled now it's going to combine convert into compiled code or native code exactly same thing happening here the hybrid native what going to happen they are going to create application using the programming language and that language is going to be compiled the language is going to compile is component and everything to actual native code that is the use of called hybrid native i know that it little bit complicated for you because you never understand the technology but you have to understand basically way that hybrid one going to use the web 
Now, hybrid active means you're going to write your own programming and the compiler is going to compile that language into your native code. Due to that, this is faster than the web browser. But I can say one thing, guys, hybrid native is never ever going to be, okay, you can say 99.9% .9 faster, but 0.1% will be slower than the native because native is always be native. But nowadays, we are not going to 99.9% .9 faster means okay, right? It's not that much bad. If it's 10% or 30 percent it will be bad. Now, 99.9% .9 is good. In this case, guys, no one going to develop the application for individual things. People are developing. But we're going to learn about a hybrid native. Hybrid native means you are going to learn one language, and using that language, you can develop the application for both Android and iOS. That we're going to learn about today called Flutter. But Flutter is giving us that functionality. You think that if you're going to learn one language, using that language can develop the application for the Android and iOS. That is going to learn today in our course that is our subject called Flutter. In Flutter, we have to learn the language, okay, language called Dart. Dart you have to learn. Here you have to learn Java or you have to learn Swift or Objective-C. But in case of Flutter, you have to learn the language called Dart. Once you learn the Dart, then using this Dart language, okay, you can develop both the Android and iOS. Uh, here only disadvantage I can say that you have to learn one new language called Dart. And guys, trust me, Dart is same as Java and C sharp. It's a pure object-oriented programming language. We have the same class, or like the abstraction, encapsulation, interface, method method loading, functional like the operator loading, uh, like for loop, while loop, do loop all like all the kind of stuff will be available here but you have to understand why the dart is guided here because they designed this language in such a way this language is going to be convert the entire programming into the native code that's reason they develop the dart and dart is the only and only language using that you can go to develop the flutter means if you're going to develop an application using flutter then you have to fast learn the dart then you can go using the Dart, you can go and develop the Android and iOS application. This is the only one thing we have to learn in the other th in our course. After learning the Dart, then only you can go and develop the application on Android iOS. We are not going to, okay, I say, okay, this is Android, what's going to happen at iOS? Going to happen. No, you are write the code, automatically the Flutter is going to convert the UI, the appearance, the theme, everything based on the platform. All of you know that Android support, which designing? Material designing, right? It's called material design. What is material design, guys? If you know that, okay, let me suppose call material design. Okay. So material design. You know that, just material design, Google. Now this designing, like the material designing supported by the if you're going to develop any application you have to go and follow this kind of, you can see that this is the mobile application right this kind of designing is called the material design this kind of design called material design and by default in dart or in flutter guys i'm what i'm saying dart you have to understand i'm talking about the flutter only in the flutter by default they are supporting the material design android support material design but you guys understand this is the Android view, right? But if you go for iOS, iOS doesn't have the material view. What is the view of material? The iOS is called, called Cupertino. Cupertino iOS. Cupertino. You can see this one. If you see this one, you can understand this is called Cupertino designing. Whatever you can see this type of designing, it's called Cupertino. If you go for images, that's the second, guys. You can see the iOS designing is here. This kind of designing is called the Cupertino designing. Means if you go, okay, if you go to Android, Android support material designing, material designing, and the iOS support the Cupertino design. And guys, trust me, these two things are inbuilt in Flutter.
you no need to design specific to Android and iOS. You write only single code. The same code is going to behave the different in, in Android and same code is going to display different in the iOS. That is called the designing concept. As a mobile developer, if you're going to become a mobile developer, you have to know that how the material design looks like, how the Cupertino design should be looks like. These two designing we are going to cover in case of a flutter. Okay. And apart from that, also you can go and develop application web. We are not going to uh, like we are not going to learn that one, but I'll show in the course how you can go and develop the same code, how you can go and export to the our application. Clear? Now, for the reason, guys, you can see that this is our course. I think already you recent, uh, received this course one. Let's see what are the course we are going to cover. First, we want to discuss about what is the flutter, the architecture of flutter. What is that language? Good learn about Dart language, you guys. Understand? In our course, our Dart is included. Not worry. If you don't know programming language, that, that doesn't matter. You will go and learn the Dart from scratch. Okay. Then we're going to set up the environments. How to set up the environments? How to set up the Docker in local? What is what is the use of the Docker SDK? Sorry, our Flutter SDK. Then going to learn about how to set up the Android Visual Android Studio. All these things we will discuss. Then going to discuss about what is the widget because flutter is totally based on widget what is stateful widget what is stateless widget going to discuss and discuss guys one thing you have to understand the main problem in a mobile application is called the design and design will take more time to develop an application because functionality is very less mobile functionality is very less only time going to take it is called the design that we're going to focus more in our course then we'll discuss a layout. What are the different, different layout will be there? How to design a button? How to design a text box? How to add a, a, a image? How to like social media? Or whatever the uh, the basic functionality of the things we can explain about the layout structure. And if you go here, going to discuss about how to maintain the state. Like how to in the state, going to discuss how to maintain the state full and stateless data. All this thing going to discuss about the state management. Then going to discuss about how can go and maintain the data means going to call the backend api from the flutter suppose you are developing an api and in this api how you can go and consume that api into our flutter application suppose you're going to display the list of restaurants <coughs> just imagine you're going to display list of restaurants how can go and display the list of restaurants the data will be available in other places we can go and design the list of rest uh, restaurants in restaurants we can go for list view and grid view you know that if you go flip card you have an option called list view and grid view now it's you can see that it's a grid view if you want you can go and change to list view we're going to display one by one light item that how to change the data from list to grid we can display all these things then after we go for navigation suppose you're going to click on button after successful login you want to go to next page then how you can go from one page to another page i'm going to display that how if you going to click on the back top button top button means you understood here if you go and click this back button how will go to the back that also going to discuss about the navigation and the routing then we will discuss about the uh, animation suppose going to click a button how the ripple effect will be there how the ripple effect going to work suppose going to click on the menu suppose going to display the slider sliding up sliding down zoom in zoom out then you can go use the animation one then go to use the user inputs. You know that every application that is the user input, suppose you're going to enter some information, username, password, credit card number, uh, like the delivery address, pin code, whatever you're going to enter, that's going to handle using the user inputs form. Here you're going to learn about how to design the forms, how to do the validation, lots about discuss about a lot of validation to the user uh, inputs and forms. Then after going to discuss about how we can go and use the data locally means every time you are not going to call the server sometimes you require to store the data into a local just like suppose going to store data in offline suppose someone going to start something someone going to log in you want to store the offline data then going to discuss how you can go and store the data locally using the SQL light and going to use the firebase hosting firebase data going to see what is the firebase now i know that in integrator with the native code this is guys this is the one of the extra we are going to say advanced one 
Here you want to show that suppose you are developing an application using Kotlin or Java or Objective-C and C, how you can go and integrate that code into our Flutter application? Because you know that these are the abstract layer. Top of the this one they build. Now what's going to happen? I'm going to show that you suppose going to write any program in Android and iOS. How you can go and combine that application to our application? The second one, last one, guys. Now testing. How can go and test the application? We'll see that how to use the Mockito framework, how to do the mocking of the application, all these things going to discuss. After that, we're going to learn about after building the application, how we can go and build the application, how to go and deploy the application Play Store. I'll go through, I'll show that what is code signing, how to deploy the application, and how to know that the Google con developer console, you know that how, how many applications are using. What is the what is how many applications are downloading? How many applications are uninstalling? Everything will know about this course. So this is all about course. But apart from that, we are going to learn. These are the course thing. Apart from that, we're going to learn a lot of other stuff. What is the other stuff, guys? Let's understand. I'm going to understand like the non-functional requirement. I'm going to understand crash, crash tracking. You know that. You all of you know that sometimes what happened, you suppose you are using some application, and sometimes suddenly application got crashed, it disappeared. Then we're going to track that. How why this application got crashed? What is the reason behind that one? That is going to use using the crash tracking or crash that is called the crash analytics. Okay, what do you call the crash analytics? Second one, going to see how dynamically, okay change the theme of the application theme of the application you guys understand theme of the you understand in nowadays suppose if you open the uh, this um, uh, flipkart or amazon if suppose some suppose durga puja sale is coming right or some sale is coming you know that that time automatically without operating they can change the ui they can change the color they can change everything how this is happening that you can know that how on the air we can able to change the data or we can change the configuration of the data based on your application. That is the tool going to be learned. After that, we're going to learn about the new thing called like how you know that how many users are using your application, which things they are using. They're going to integrate the Google Analytics tool. Okay, the Google Analytics tool, which is going to track each and every user activities okay now now fourth we're going to learn about the we'll learn about the concept called google firebase we'll learn about google firebase google firebase is the tool we'll learn about how we can go and use the google firebase for the application these are the tool guides mostly required for the application after that, we'll learn the push notification. Okay, push notification. Now, suppose something is happening in your application, you are to going to send the notification to the user. How you can go and send a push notification to the user? For fifth, sixth, we'll learn about background service. You know that suppose you are going to develop one mobile application for listening the song. You know that if you're going to close the, if you're going to like minimize the application also, the song is playing. In this case, we to learn about how you can go and do the background service for the application. Guys, understand you are using all the features of features of this um, uh, mobile, but as a developer, you have to know that how to do that. That the things we are going to learn today. Now, you know, push notification, background service. Then we're going to discuss about. What is called the A-B testing, alpha beta testing. Okay, means suppose guys, you can only test the application when you de de like when you publish the application on the uh, your Google Play Store. Before that, before uploading the um, the SDK or that APK into sorry APK into the in, uh, APK into our Google uh, like the Google Play Play Store, how you can go on testing that one? That we're going to learn that how developer you can test in locally without using the, without deploying the publishing application in Google Play Store. Lot of things going to learn about the mobile.
apart from that guys we are going to give additional things what are additional things you going to learn about what is called git how to maintain the git like whatever code going to learn all the code going to learn on D git then nine we're going to learn about in the line we're going to learn about uh, like um project like uh, sorry uh, node js you're going to learn about because in the application going to interact with backend for backend node just will be there in node js and then we'll learn about mongodb because as a developer we are not only providing you the ui application i'm also giving you basic knowledge on how you can go and develop the backend things at least as a developer you must have to know basics of backend if you don't know backend how going to integrate for that reason you are going to do all these things eleven going to learn about sql light and this is the most important part you have to learn this is called sql light how you can go and use the sql light for the application this thing going to learn okay apart from that this is all about the course apart from that the duration of this course guys is three months because we have covered a lot of things here, we're going to cover three months. And the timing uh, every day, the, uh, like the um, class timing, okay, it will be one hour per daily. It may be daily means from weekdays. Uh, initially, it will be weekdays, guys. After some days, when end of the week, if you look, uh, after two months, we are going to do some weekend classes. But initially, we are going to do for one hour per weekdays from Monday to Friday and like timing guys will decide the timing based on based on the batch uh, batch strength we're going to discuss about the timing it may be possible to be morning batch only we we'll plan for timing morning or evening will based on the strength we're going to decide then the um, course fee guys course fee will be the fifteen thousand. it's the fifteen thousand will be the course fee and you can go you can pay for the installment guys no need to pay if you have pay you can pay if you, do, if you don't have to pay you can go for the installment you can go and pay in the three or two, whatever you're going to do. You can pay for the instrument. Instrument also acceptable in our case. You can do that. Apart from that, after the course to all these things, what are going to do? You have to get your notes. Okay. Notes and code. You'll get from your GitHub. We're going to give you the this is a lifetime guys access. This is a lifetime access. You can access your code and notes every time in the Git, you can go access there. Apart from that, recordings. Recordings, guys, every day end of the class, we are going to provide the recordings. And the recordings will be available for you call the six months. Three months for course. After three months, you're going to available for this one. After that, you're going to revoke your access. You have a six month time, you're going to do that. Okay. Finally, additional one, guys. This is from Synotech side. Guys, we are not only a like a, like training institute, we are also we are a product company, we are also developing the product. Now, our earlier batches, like the people who are learning React, people who are learning Java, like learning .NET, we have the internal project they are working. If you are interested to work with us after your project to get some hands-on hand experience, how to develop the application, how to work on the project, how the real-time application is actually built using the company process, then you can join with us after the course. We'll give you two to three months, okay, the access access to work with us we have a lots of product we are developing our product we will give to minimum two to three months you can if you want you can extend but at least you can go with two to three months before going to for any interview just work with us let's see how real time whatever going to learn guys if you don't practice you cannot ready for the interview then we are going to give you chance you can work for two to three months with us let's see how actual real time project is built okay this is all about our course guys and in this course also we're going to develop on a small small product we're going to develop a swiggy clone we're going to show you how you can go and create swiggy like uh, application into your uh, into your using the flutter okay clear guys now now the question for question answer if anyone any questions please feel free to ask me yes guys you know any questions hey. hey this is vijay yeah vijay Hey, thanks for the session and really very truly inspiring one. So just I have one quick question that how will you measure the performance? Is there any yeah. specific tool for you know flutter to you know, if yeah. more number of users or you know, uh, no two things? Yeah, one, yeah. That's the reason guys what are going to we are going to integrate the 
application analytics tool. That I'm saying that if you go for Firebase, let me show you this one. The application performance, how the application working, how the application actually behave in user side. That thing I'm going to show you using the Firebase integration. Just give me one minute. I'm going to once you open this one, I'm going to show you. Let me show you this one. Just a second. In Firebase, if you're going to integrate to Firebase, guys, you can see that in here we have lots of tools for mobile. Just a second. Just a second. It's going to open. I'm going to show you. Okay. Now, if you go to left hand side, you can see that we have called this one performance. This performance is a tool. If you go and integrate, it's going to actually integrate with the, you can see iOS, Android, and with what if suppose, suppose called Android. Now, if you go this one, guys, here, if you're going to integrate this SDK application, then this application is going to exactly going to tell you how your application performing into the actual the user case. This is not only one tool, there is n number of tools are available in the market, but this is the free tools we are going to use in our code. We will show you using this performance tool, you get your entire application performance, how many times the page get, how, what is the open, suppose you click one button, on click a button, you are opening a page, how many times you are taking from opening one button to another page, all the performance metrics is going to be given by this performance tool. Clear? And guys, yep. here also Perfect. we can go and get everything here. You can go to suppose cross analytics. As I told, right? Suppose your application getting cross all the times. How do you know that? What is the root cause of crossing? You can go and simply go and integrating with Flutter. You can see that Flutter integration is available here. You can simply go and integrate with Flutter. Guys, if you learn the Firebase, everything is readily available here. As it's a test lab, right? A bit testing. You can go and test lab here. You can do the test lab. We are going to use the tools, which tools actually market is using. These tools will go and use in application to understand end to end of application performance. What is priority? Build, performance, analytics, fixing. That's the thing we are going to build for the application. This is the all thing we are going to use. Okay. As I told, right? If I'm going to change some data dynamically, then going to use called remote config. Go learn about how you can go and configure this, and this remote config from here only if you're going to change the button of a if you want to change the color of a button no need to go and update the data just go and click the update here automatically all the application who are using they can go to change that is they go called remote config same to same suppose you want to go and see okay suppose you can see here the concept called um, messaging suppose going to send the push notification then how we can go push notification, then go learn about GCM, Google Cloud Messaging. The Google Cloud Messaging is already inbuilt here. As a developer, Firebase is your like the, uh, Firebase is the most important part for you. You have to first learn Firebase, all the things guys, whatever you think from application, everything is available here. Then this tool we are going to learn and integrate with the application. Just remember, suppose you're going to do social media authentication. Suppose you're going to do Google authentication, Facebook authentication, Twitter authentication. How can you do that? Already authentication is available there. You can simply go and integrate authentication with the user. Everything is available inside the app. This, using this tool, we can measure, calculate, track, and do all the things about our application. Clear? Clear, Vijay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. And yeah, one more thing. Yeah, 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 please. Hmm. So you talk about MongoDB yeah. and uh, SQL Lite, right? So both are database. Yeah. MongoDB is no SQL. So yeah. SQL Lite, you are stressing something different. So I mean, yeah, guys, actually, some importance. Why yeah. I am taking MongoDB? That is a task called Real M. Real M. This is the substitute of the SQL right? You know that you all of you know SQL right? SQL stands for structure query language. That is for SQL Server uh, Oracle. That is SQL right? Is a compact version of SQL. This is the same RDMS, but is a compact version. In the mobile, if you want to store any data, then you can go and use the SQL right? because we cannot store entire SQL Server into local mobile because it's very heavy. We can store compact version. For that reason, we're going to use the 
this one called the SQL light. This SQL light, if you remember a course, I told that to store the offline data means locally you're going to use SQL light. But as a developer, I'm going to tell you MongoDB also another option. You can go and use in you can go and use into mobile, but not MongoDB. You can use that is called the real M. Real M guys, the real time synchronization message synchronous database for the mobile. Suppose just imagine you develop one application, it's offline and online. You discard the net, you do some work, you store the data. Once net connected, you have to sync the data to the server. In this case, guys, the real AM is the person who can going to help this one. After that, I'm saying that we can going to learn about SQLite and dis discuss about what is the use of a real AM. But this MongoDB actually going to explain about Node.js because as a developer, you have to know basics of the back um, backend. In our chapter, you know that we have a concept called HTTP, right? Call it the API. What is API? How to call it API? What is HTTP method? What is payload? What is body? How you know that? If you know to develop one small API, then we're going to know that how to integrate. In this case, we we'll learn Node.js as an API for database going to use the MongoDB. But these guys, we're going to learn about SQLite is compulsory. But RealM going to show that how the RealM is going to configure into the machine, into your application. Clear? So correct me if my understanding is wrong. So what you are yeah. trying to say is, when we are using the mobile app to, uh, yeah. to store some data which may yeah. be offline and we need to take it uh, store in the local thing so we are yeah. going to use your light that will be stored in the mobile for for the application right yeah but the main data we are going to push to some different centralized data place yes, right? yes in that yes. case how much data we can store in the SQL light because it's again it's based on yeah, the memory. That, yes, of, that is right. only dependent upon your size, like mobile space. That is no mobile limitation, space. guys. SQL light is file based database. If your application contains more data, you can go to store more data here. Totally, a your application, if suppose your mobile has one GB data, you can go to store up to one GB. So in that case, we we will calculate the size and all those stuff of the data. Yeah, yeah obviously, because the, right. as okay. a developer, we are always going to try that. We are not going to store any data in locally, because that is our past things. But why going to store the SQL? Just level so for you after login, you want to store the token. Where are going right. to store the token? After login, suppose you want to store the user information. Suppose some sorting you did. Some suppose some screen you enter some data, and after come back, you want to like you want to maintain the same data. In this case, you want to maintain some data. In this case, you can go and use the data. But I am saying that SQLite is used to store the offline data in the application. Due to that, you're going to use the SQLite. But the size actually, we are going to learn, we are going to learn how can go minimize the thing. Because mobile means we have to more optimization. In this case, we will see that how you can go and optimize the application. But SQLite will be there. We are going to store the data. Same to that is another substitute called RealM. Which is going to store the data. Also, guys, there is a concept called CouchDB. CouchDB also there, which is also going to store the data. Guys, n number of things are available to store the data. But we cannot go cover everything. We are only going to cover about the SQLite. Clear? Perfect. If you want to learn, you can go and learn. Lot of things available, guys. I can give the all the names. You can learn. But we are going to use the things because everything cannot be possible to cover, right? Whatever we are going to learn, that will learn in depth. Yeah. yeah, so what is the leading uh, thing in the market? Is, 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 SQL light case. SQL light. Okay. Everywhere if you go, you can see that SQL light. Okay. That is the standard. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rites, please. So good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. So will you teach state management, sir, like uh, get get X provider block? Yeah, the state manager, everything is if you see this one, guys. The state okay. management is there. We'll listen about the um, scope model provider, like uh, the how the state manager ma ma managing in the Flutter. We can learn all these things, guys. So which one will, will you teach, sir? Which one means? Uh, like block provider. Get no, yeah, yeah, block one. Block one. Go and take it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. We are going to start this batch very soon, and uh, like if anyone interested, please reply to that mail. And our course coordinator going to uh, reach you shortly. And we're going to plan for the maybe next week or maybe next to next week. We're going to plan for the new best start. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining.